It's soon. It <laughs> should be. I hope. I'm hoping. It says live. Does it say live? It says live on Facebook. On the... Nice. Mm-hmm. Wait, it's working? Yes, I see it on Facebook. Very nice. Hello, everybody. We're just going to vamp for a little bit because everyone's going to be like, where are they? What are they doing? Right? They'll be all stressed and worried because they can't Jesus. start their week without us. 20 minutes late. Inexcusable. Inexcusable. No. Well, I mean, there are excuses, but, you know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, Troy. This is a super villain show. We're going to have to launch you into the sun now. <laughs> Thank right. you. So I've been waiting. <laughs> oh. Um, hello, everybody who is joining us. Uh, it's Mutants and Masterminds Monday. I am the disembodied voice of Troy, and it is, as every Monday, uh, my distinct pleasure of hanging out with Crystal Frazier. Hi. And Steve Kenson. Hey, everybody. Designers and contributors to Mutants and Masterminds, and of course, the people that are watching. And, um, you know, there are tens and tens of you. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are definitely getting some exciting traction like you know thousands of people are are checking out the streams and um and enjoying Mm -hmm. themselves which i really dig um the thing that i'm really excited about is today's subject what are we discussing oh uh we are talking about danger zones which is finally releasing this week and uh uh, it's a supplement yes (laughs) right on by releasing this week, we mean every day this week. Right. Yep. A new Danger Zone every single day. Danger Zone Bank just drops over on the Green Ronin website. And uh, I mean, we've been talking these up for, for weeks and weeks at this point. So hopefully most of you know what to expect. They are little guides to using different locations in your Mutants and Masterminds games and who you find there and what you find there and any special rules to help you you know, really make any encounter there uh, a set piece. Mm-hmm. Right on. And so, um, yeah, so in the the uh, in the archives, the Mutants and Masterminds archive, how many total danger zones are there? Uh, there are, there are currently 35, uh, 36 if you include the, the parade route free preview that we did last month. Uh, and 37 if you include the stadium, which I cannot believe I left off when I was outlining the book and I will need to write here soon because what's a superhero fight? What what is a collection of superhero fights that leaves out the stadium? Right, if you can't stage the the Justice League fight versus the Secret Society, you know, from the cartoon, you know, what are you even doing? Now I've I've failed as a game developer. So, well, we're addressing it. Yeah. Well, right on. Well, 35 Danger Zones is pretty awesome. What are the five uh, that we are releasing throughout the week? Uh, so this week, uh, we just released Danger Zone Bank. So that that is a pretty straightforward Gibby in terms of like why you're there and, and how you have superhero fights there. Uh, and then I don't know the exact order we're releasing this week, but we've also got Junkyard, uh, uh, the highways, uh, mm-hmm. waterfront. And museum. Oh, and museum. Thank you. Nice. Now, I'm did... bad at words. <laughs> well, it is Monday. We're just all getting mm. kind of warmed up here. Yeah. Um, uh, also, it always just kind of throws off our game just a hair when our technology is um, being a jerk. But uh, do you want to, should we take a look at each one of them and talk a bit about them? Or um, how do you want to, how do you want to lay that info out? Uh, yeah, I mean, we can just, I mean, are people, are people here now? Can we they actually jump into the fun stuff? We can jump into the fun stuff. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, let me turn on screen sharing and we can show off the maps for the danger zones. Nice. There we go. Uh, and share. Can everybody see that? Yeah, looks good. Looks getting good. So, yeah, there is our there is our bank map. It is a nice it is a nice multi level like savings and loan where it can be a standalone building in a small town. It can be like the cornerstone of a bigger skyscraper in your in your Freedom City analog. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
we've got a little basement area down here in the corner. Right? I, I control the mouse. <laughs> you all have to look where I point you. Uh, My favorite down there is, is number 25, the forgotten fallout shelter. Yes, because big, sturdily built institutions back in the day had you know, fallout shelters, bomb shelters, things like that during World War II and the Cold War. And it seemed sensible to throw that in there just for fun. Mm -hmm. I like it. We we tried to throw one or two little touches into each map just to just to add to the utility and give give some plot ideas to GMs. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a question. Somebody's asking if there is going to be a uh, Kenny Loggins supplement for Danger Zones. I don't understand <laughs> the reference. Uh, no. Footloose Highway to the Danger Zone. You know. No. Oh no. no, Danger Zone Highway releases later in the week. Oh, yes, yeah. there exactly. you go. <laughs> we haven't got the highway yet. Wait. Yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna yeah we're working on the Footloose uh, source book there. Um, Buccino, um, Alice Ping says pretty noise. Uh, Jay Gray says I love it. These maps are amazing. Why you people are so generous? I love uh -huh. it. Um, of course, we've got our link wizard, Jay Gray, dropping all of the links to everything <laughs> ever, and it's it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you for that, my friend. Um, so is there any kind of special sort of thoughts you have about kind of utilizing the bank or any sort of uh, uh, maybe behind the scenes -y stuff that folks should know? Well, I mean, while developing the bank, I feel like I ended up on a police watch list because I was Googling things like, <laughs> how much does a bank vault weigh? How long does it take to drill through a bank vault? Right. <laughs> how hard is it to pick a bank vault? <laughs> how do time locks work? Yes. <laughs> that, that bank is so, maps. <laughs> right? That is so very... 2020 like that would just be the perfect yeah. next thing to happen crystal fraser arrested by the fbi for wanting oh, yeah. to draw a bank <laughs> oh no in two years they're gonna make a forensic files video or episode <laughs> all about how they arrested a daring bank robber mm -hmm. because of my search history right <laughs> right very nice um all right what's uh what's next Oh, we also got Junkyard, which is coming hey. out later this week. Yeah. Now that is a primo superhero encounter area, if ever there were one. Oh, yeah. Because Good. it's just full of big, heavy stuff that you can throw at people. And it's already all wrecked. So you That's don't really right. care all that much if you're smashing things up, you know. I mean, more ordinarily, you pick up and throw cars at people, you get into trouble. That's true, right. Yeah, yeah, innocence and stuff, yeah. But if it's just right. a bunch of other garbage, um, not a problem. Hey, so um, when using these maps, is it really kind of for reference or um, how, how large are they when they get the PDF? Uh, I mean, the when you get the PDF, they are page-sized. So mm -hmm. in, this, in this case, half-page-sized. Uh, we are, I think the current plan is to also make them available on roll 20 once we get our, like yep. figure out how we're, how we're handling roll 20 and how all that works. So you will be able to import these for your online games and use them as backdrops for your adventures and your fight scenes. Yeah, yep. so um, we should probably also make it available digitally, but like one to one, like as large as the world is large. <laughs> Isn't that just Google Maps? Right. <laughs> yes, it is. I love this. Uh, Sean Vieira says, a couple years back, I worked <laughs> in the former <laughs> National Bank of Canada, now a government office. Yes, the vaults were still in the basement, so banks do get repurposed for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, sure Alice, says, <laughs> Alice says, so the FBI watch list believes she's robbing a bank and hiding out in a junkyard then. So <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So uh, the junkyard also lets us stage my favorite like tense action scene the trapped in a car crusher oh uh, yes scenario i love uh, that and there are specifically rules for what happens when you're trapped in a car crusher yep it, uh, how long we, you have to get out and how you have to do it i yeah, love I think, it we've got that the is, car crusher on the map over here that is so good of course yep. you do note the, uh, note the crane with the giant magnet Oh yeah, and if you Absolutely if you just required. want like a bigger crane that can loom over the whole junkyard all at the same time, go for it. It just would have taken up so much map space that, you know, 
it mm-hmm. would have obscured all the fun little bits where your characters can hide. I and of course, love this it. big toxic lake in the middle of everything. Oh, you gotta, yeah. Yeah, no, send, your, sure. send your Aquaman in there. You're right, yes, yeah. Uh, trapped and maybe feeling a little uh, uh, under the weather because they're in this watery, you know, uh, toxic sludge. Uh, oh, here's Jay Gray. Jay Gray says, uh, how often do you see the use of battle maps versus theater of the mind for mutants and masterminds. Well, that's a hard thing to answer. Kind yeah, of. I mean, it's, I don't see a battle maps very often, but I do see a lot of people using like maps as reference, like, mm-hmm. you know, to point out like, you know, the villains are here and this is what the landscape looks like. Here's where the cars are. Because when, when you see all the options, it's, it feels a lot more natural to say, well, I rip out this parking meter and use that as the club, or I dive behind this car here. Mm-hmm. So I've still mm-hmm. got a clear line of sight. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, because there's not really much in Mutants and Masterminds in the way of, like, really fiddly tactical movement. Yeah, once you get more than, what, three, maybe four ranks of a movement power, you're right. off, off you're the map off the every map round. Anyway, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Steve jo- uh, Stephen Jones says, uh, Roll20 News made my day. Uh, and then Sean Vieira said, uh, also make them available on Fantasy Grounds as well for World, uh, as well as World Twenty. And Matt Rimmler mm-hmm. says, please bring Danger Zones to the Fantasy Grounds as well. So yeah, we will do that. And Jay Gray says, I'm getting nightmarish flashbacks to the brave little toaster. I said nothing. I said nothing. I <laughs> uh, love it. Um, okay, uh, what's next? Uh, next up, we have the museum. The mm. museum. Yeah. This. Yeah. We're also going to have a science center in the future, so that's going to be your like oh. laboratory and like hands-on mm-hmm. public right. science lessons. And with those two, you will have the top two locations for kicking off superhero adventures. Basically, right. Mm-hmm. If someone steals something from a museum or <laughs> the laboratory, mm-hmm. I mean, I or- guess we could have. Well, and the bank. And the bank, yeah. And the bank, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. We wanted we wanted the most robbable places in the city first and foremost. <laughs> Absolutely. And also, I'm just realizing now that somebody's assuming I'm going to go on a crime wave. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm kind of be like building the case. I mean, not against you. Not that I'll turn you in. Uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, I can really see how this could be confused. So I'm glad that we're doing this live stream <laughs> so that you can it's prove the <laughs> perfect cover. <laughs> right. <It's the> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we are accomplices Steve, but that's all I right. know. We always have been. We always yeah. have been. Uh, <laughs> so- we endeavor to be. Tell us about it. Oh, well, there's a lot of fun stuff here. Like yes. the entire lobby is laid out with a giant Mayan calendar. So oh. it is the perfect mm-hmm. place to reveal, ah, there's a secret ritual going on this whole time. I love it. <laughs> yes. And also, I, I don't know how well it's showing up for <laughs> the viewers. owl bear. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the taxidermy hall where they have all right. kinds of unusual, unusual, fantastic, mythical creatures that have yes. never before seen light of day like dinosaurs right i mean come on mm-hmm. and of course <laughs> to the t-rex? left you won't note the that's big mythical. t-rex oh yes i love there's it perfect, there's perfect for some villain to bring to life <laughs> there's oh, a right. lot to take in just in terms of all the little museum exhibits down through here so like i i assume this is a cursed mirror of some sort oh and certainly over here in the history wing we've got an alien spacecraft because this oh. is a comic book universe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, did I see like a sarcophagus? Oh, oh yes. 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 Oh, <laughs> that is something. Perfect for the ancient undead villain, you know, to awaken out of. Yep. And we've got, well, we may have to go back and tinker to make it clear that this is an elevator shaft for like loading up stuff from the second floor storage or the basement. Dun, dun, mm-hmm. dun. And the basement has yes. these big old forgotten storage areas and a giant like cat or uh, repository Archives. for old manuscripts. Oh yeah, yeah, I love it. So lots of places you can navigate in and out through here and have a running fight that risks breaking all kinds of expensive mm-hmm. artifacts. In fact, we have a whole set of rules in the <laughs> museum that talks about exactly what what gets broken. If if you miss 
oh. with your your superhero attack. No kidding. Talk um, to me about and, that a little bit. You know, so we, we, one of the key things about the the museum as a setting is that it's supposed to uh, give the heroes some pause where they're like, oh, but we're surrounded by all of these priceless artifacts. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to be really careful um, or, you know, we can't, we could wreck the place and we could destroy these, these things that are super valuable. Um, so we incorporated a system in the rules that basically talks about, you know, what happens if you're, you're just throwing attacks around in the museum and you miss, um, if you're not being, if you're not being cautious, um, and basically setting it up so the heroes can, can earn their hero points by exerting, you know, a, the right amount of caution or even doing those last minute saves <laughs> where the hero, you know, like dives to catch the priceless thing that falls off its pedestal nice. before it hits or the floor. The, or where the villains are deliberately knocking things knocking over. Knocking things over, <laughs> yeah. See, I love this that we are finally holding heroes accountable to the carnage they leave behind when they come to save the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is great. We got a couple great comments here. Um, my favorite is uh, probably uh, Stephen Jones says, uh, only if you knew what highways to use to get away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Big mm. fans of the owl bear. Many, many good. Uh, let's see. I could repurpose the museum as yeah, a superhero in headquarters. Yeah. <laughs> And in yes. retrospect, I probably should have had stats for uh, for some sort of bear owl, right? Yes, or a, right. Uh, other cryptid. Maybe we can throw that into the collected version because the collected yeah. version is going to have a like a bestiary in the back of urban, right? like urban characters and urban monsters and cryptids and all kinds of fun yeah. modern opponents and minions and things like that. Well, so talk yeah. about that a little bit. Oh. So what, what well, is Well, for that? starters, we'll have the bear owl in there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's all anybody needs to know, really. I mean, we'll call it the grizzly owl. <laughs> yes. As it is, every danger zone already comes with a set of stock characters of, mm -hmm. you know, basically all of the sort of like major types of characters you'd expect to encounter there. And mm -hmm. usually at least one or more unique named characters. Um, to add some personality. Yes, yeah, so like the the bank, which is available now, has what security guards and a hacker for your white collar crimes and an investigator mm -hmm. who you know the PCs will probably butt heads with after the robbery, and then a like a named bank manager who is mm -hmm. a, an NPC you can just drop into your game who has a, a little more personality and background fleshed out than just a generic bank manager. So right. it's somebody you could set up as a like a a dependent for your character, or it might be their boss in their day job, or it could nice. be like a romantic interest. I love it. So I'm I'm, uh, I'm reading what uh, folks are talking about here, and um, let's see. That's a huge sarcophagus. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> we don't like to brag. We don't. Yeah, I mean, come size on. that matters. No, it's not. It's how many. Um, how many people you can kidnap and, and as a villain and uh, for the good guy as they come to, you know, do the thing here. Let's it's see. It's like a 25-foot-long sarcophagus. What could be in there? Right. It could be a giant mummy. It could just be many layers of sarcophagus down to, like, a very small right. mummy. <laughs> right. <laughs> you just keep opening <laughs> I love it. You just keep opening it up in smaller and smaller boxes, and it's a tiny little baby mummy. <laughs> um, that's so not. That's a little bleak and a little dark. Uh, not as funny as I intended. Uh, uh, yeah, I was but, thinking more like a Muppet. Yes, <laughs> right. Um, like let's Kermit see. Kermit the Pharaoh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can... <laughs> right. Write that down. Look at that. I scored. Um, let's see. Uh, no, that was my reference. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was inspired by my by my uh, not funny joke. Um, uh, Jay Gray sharing some more details. Bear Owl is a suggestion. Um, Jacob says, uh, just going to steal my superpower bestiary. bestiary. That is I one of my see. favorite supplements. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's it's inspired by. Um, <laughs> there's a dead god in there. Yeah, sure. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Russian. Why we haven't mummies. opened it. 
<laughs> I love this. Uh, you know, I hate Russian dolls. They're so full of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jay Gray, bringing it home. I love it. Oh, um, I didn't know we were here for the dad jokes. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's no escape. Um, yeah, and so we've got. So, are we still kind of digging around in the basement here? Are we? Oh no, we are. We are more than able to move on. Oh uh, yeah, let's check out the next spot. Um, I'm taking yeah. a screenshot. So this is of... where we get a whole different scale. Of... Yeah, this this is like a little like a district map basically mm -hmm. instead of an individual building because you know part of the part of the book is talking about like the different districts and areas in a city not just specific buildings mm -hmm. yeah in addition to the waterfront we've got the historic district and mm -hmm. a, a couple uh, of other similar yeah minority like neighborhoods mm -hmm. uh, this is the, great yeah. the our, our mm -hmm. Sorry. What you doing to us, Troy? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this one has basically a couple of like smaller scale maps within it. So you've got like a little shopping district over here, and you've got generic alleys and buildings here for your your regular superhero fights, and a marina here for like your your villain mm -hmm. who's going to make a getaway on a speedboat, and a cruise ship the heroes can save, and a garbage scow. So we can probably get set on fire. Yeah, we should have done an interior for the warehouses, but I didn't think it was necessary since we've got a warehouse coming up. Right. Ah, very nice. Yeah, uh, people are off are very are awfully fond of the of just the dock setting. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's mm -hmm. a it's a classic for it sure. Is. So we've it got, is. yeah, so the marina. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, this this map reminds me a lot of the classic Marvel superheroes yes. uh, maps. Uh, <laughs> that That is what I took inspiration from. <laughs> right? Uh, and, you know, it really does point to the, what Crystal was talking about in terms of the, the map itself inspiring some of the story in just in terms of, of really giving the players a visual of where everything is happening so that they can they can say you know things like you know okay does my character get knocked into you know that speedboat over there uh you know can we duck through this alley between these buildings you know those kinds of things that yeah, really do I have, sort of bring it all to life yeah is my leaping rank high enough that i can clear the distance between like the industrial industrial docks over here and the shopping center that's being mm -hmm. robbed. Right. I love it. Um, Alice Peng has a question. Are all of them going to be available for pickup in one big bundle so people don't have to worry? Did I miss one? Uh, yes, we are. I don't know offhand how many we are doing as PDF previews like this and how many, how many are going to be exclusive to the collected book, but we will be doing a final book that collects individual or all the individual locations we publish and adds additional ones. And like I said, has a, the bestiary in the back mm -hmm. and has the a section up front talking a little bit more about city life in general. Nice. Oh, hey, yeah. uh, uh, a gentleman by the name of John Polojek says... Polojek. Polojek. so familiar. I, I'm not I've sure where... Somewhere. Me too. I'll have to check our, our list. Was, wasn't he an MTV VJ? Ooh, that's it. That's exactly it. Um, right. Way back in the day when there was music. Um, John says, uh, when the bestiary comes up, it's just possible you might know someone familiar with the, cryptid, the cryptids <laughs> of Appalachia and the <laughs> mid-Atlantic states, along with a passive, uh, pa passives, <laughs> passing familiarity with Slavic mythology. Well, I mean, that's I, a mix. I will point out that I did hide a hide behind in the time travelers codex so <laughs> i have a soft spot for appalachian mythology mm -hmm. there you go um let's see yep uh, uh alex thomas says um i love that this one is so scalable you could crop certain sections to uh, mm -hmm. present several mm -hmm. different locations for sure absolutely yeah uh, and the final resolution on this map is just over the top like you have to get this close before you start seeing that they're brush strokes yeah. right yeah yeah and and there are you know, these areas are all iconic you know even mm -hmm. the marina i mean there, mm -hmm. you know there's many yep. many uh people to be saved new crimes to be thwarted in the marina 
Oh yeah, you could have a nice little a nice little beat 'em up in just about any of these corners. Like, oh, yep. oh, smuggling at the warehouses. Warehouses. Drop yeah. a truck right here, and then you're ready to go. Or love it. Um, Evan talks about the cruise ship being um, his favorite part of the top secret box set back in uh, the 1980s. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he says, uh, "Pass my liniment because he's old." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, okay. Uh, Brilliant. People are loving it. Um, what, this is, is this number three or? Uh, I think it was, this was number now. four. Uh, yeah, no. yeah. Yeah. So we've got one more. This one is releasing a little further down the line, but we have the amusement park. Oh, I love this. this. Isometric this is, map. Yeah, this is an isometric map and it's a little more like more of an illustration than a like tactical map, but I still really like it. I mm -hmm. I might have sent one of my favorite small childhood uh, amusement parks as the reference for this map. What was that? <laughs> what what place is that? I I don't know. I'd I'd like to hear if the audience can figure out just from the layout, like mm -hmm. what what was Crystal's little local cheapo uh, amusement park when she was a kid. Yeah, she, but, yeah, yeah. Give us your is, thoughts, folks. <laughs> but our in world. I think we're calling it Wizard World or Magic mm -hmm. World. Something like the, that. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's kind of a generic theme park with a sort of a magic y, very generic magic y yeah. theme you know. to it. Completely not using any copyrighted material. Like unicorns are public domain. Oh, sure. 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 And, and, demon heads that demon lead to other heads. dimensions the, absolutely sure, public domain. sure absolutely yeah. round you know. body eyeball face um yeah, eyes uh, are uh, public domain you can't copyright <laughs> eyes you can't right? come on <laughs> and i, I, love, I it. love the little coffin shaped like show arena over here jousting arena <laughs> all right so dt sketch puccino says ha I monster ride. Uh, great America in California is Joe's guess. No, no, no. Great, great America is mm -mm. like pretty recent and huge. Alex <laughs> wants to know: Did it have a beholder ride in real life? Uh, it did <laughs> not. It actually had a completely <laughs> <Maybe>. different theme. <laughs> Cedar Point. No, I've never been no. to Cedar Point. Remember, I'm not from the Midwest. <laughs> Jacob says Adventureland. <laughs> is that a place <laughs> no I, I have uh, no idea probably it's a perfect name for a, a uh, name. theme park Steven i'm just enjoying jones. hearing about everybody else's favorite theme park. me too me too uh steven jones says uh come on guys i want to ride the D, &D roller coaster <laughs> 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 uh, they'll copyright all the eyes oh mm -hmm. the letter the letter i um yes that's funny yes. um but of um, course isn't this a great place for you know the reverse portal that pours all of the fantasy monsters you know out from the you know demon's mouth you know into the amusement park for the heroes to fight where they have to work minimum wage jobs right, right. and right. they find out in the end it was the carny this whole time <laughs> Uh, yep. Bush Gardens, that's kind of a big one, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a big it's actually pretty big. But it was, Bush Gardens was actually one of my childhood theme parks. It was the very affordable alternative to uh, uh, Disney World. But mm -hmm. the, that's right. the one I really remember from it as a kid was called Boardwalk and Baseball, which <laughs> went, it was, it was trying to recreate like a turn of the century 1900s boardwalk as like a theme park. And, and baseball. Yes, mm -hmm. and they had baseball. Yes. Because, you know, um, America. But yeah, yeah it was like, you know, turn of the century Americana, like kind of historical, but very much like a fictionalized historical take on it. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. The Disneyfication or the attempt to anyway of, yeah. of the past. Hey, so was that so this um, baseball and um, was it Bush's baseball in the bushes or something? No, uh, boardwalk and baseball. Boardwalk they, and... they went bankrupt in, I want to say 1990. And, the and that was your torn down. And yeah. that's your Oh, see. Yeah. So I'm sorry, friends. It is not Silverwood <laughs> or many any of the or Camden Park or Mm -hmm. um, but um, I love this so much, and I was thinking too, you could probably 
is could you blend in some circus stuff in this or oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, absolutely could. I mean it talks what are the what are the uh not creatures, what are the stat blocks in the back of this particular entry is the carny. So we're very much taking into like the map is for a theme park, but the mm -hmm. the the write-up itself is for all kinds of like dedicated amusement space. Right. So there's rules for like, oh, what if you have a fight on a Ferris wheel? Uh, mm -hmm. Or, you know, you get into right. a beat em up in a dark ride or- Right, someone's stealing much, all the scones. How much strength does it take to pick up a Ferris wheel? Quite a bit, <laughs> as I discovered. <laughs> Personally. Yeah, no, yes. I've been out there lifting Ferris wheels, adding, bumper cars, roller coasters. Yes. Adding how much does a Ferris wheel weigh to Crystal's I am not allowed back search. into the Bush Gardens. No, you closed down that one boardwalk and baseball's place over it. I'm, <laughs> uh, Jay Gray says, um, oh, yeah. Um, everybody's everybody's reflecting back on their favorite um, sort of, you know, smaller amusement. Mine was uh, here uh, in Washington. Uh, Enchanted Village. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, loved it. And then there is another one in um, in Portland. I'm trying to remember the name of it, if anybody recalls. And I think it's still. I think it might be Enchanted Forest, or I have no idea. It's Enchanted, nonetheless. Um, so is this is the this is kind of the this is number five, right? Mm -hmm. This is exciting. So we're re uh, we're releasing uh, one a week, and then we're going to bundle it all together. At what's the timeline? Oh, no, we're re releasing one a day all week. A day. One a day. I'll yes. say one a week. I meant one a day all week, and then in the future there will be a compilation of all these. Yep. Nice. Do we have a timing on that? We do not. Uh, we we are in the middle of the apocalypse, and it's yeah. kind of hard to order books in the apocalypse as it turns out mm -hmm. absolutely so we are doing our best to get everything organized and and on track but it's kind of hard to make long-term plans absolutely yeah. but Indeed. we know that this is uh we're doing this and it's super fun there are um let's see uh did you do you have the um parade handy I have some folks that are talking about it and asking. Oh, uh, that one does not have a map that has nope. art from a new artist. Uh, I, oh. That's Micah Brand. Micah, thank you. I, mm -hmm. I keep I kept thinking of his uh, superhero character Sparrow. So the map is in your <laughs> mind. <laughs> it's yep. like his name is not Sparrow. Come on. No. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, both the parade route and the the highways um, danger zones don't have much in the way of exciting maps just because it's like, well, they're roads yeah. and they're straight, right. they're long. And yeah. <laughs> there's highways, really not a whole lot to say. Highways, we have some miscellaneous street intersections where you can like right. have dust ups with super villains or things like that. But it's not like we could make, just draw a long stretch of road where, you know, your speedster is having a race with you know, somebody souped up supermobile. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we could have, but it would have been really boring. Right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, we we just made uh, you know twenty miles of road. There we <laughs> go. It's all to scale. <laughs> uh, thank you. It's all to scale. Exactly. Enjoy. Um, uh, Stephen Jones has a related question, which is great because it kind of moves us into the question mm -hmm. phase. Um, uh, are there plans for Mutants and Masterminds uh, condition card? Uh, yes, I had thought those were up, but apparently they are not. I discovered just recently. Ah, I don't know where they are. Well, uh, we're gonna. They're, I they're made out them. There. Yes, there, well, the, there are more than plans. There are actual cards. It is a yeah. finished product. It has been so, finished for. A very long time now. Well, the problem is that the roads that we made to get them here are really long, and we keep making um, them, and so it delays it's getting things. Getting hijacked by bikers. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> the other question is there. Um, oh, is there a gas station in the highway supplement? That's <laughs> that's a great idea. No, that uh, would that would have been a great idea. Let me. Wait. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, DT Sketch Buccino says, um, I just want to say that name. Speaking of shipping, any more word on the Time Traveler's Codex being released in print? Uh, I mean, it has been sent off to print. It is that at is print. What I know, it is at print right now. And the it, moment that it exists in the corporeal world, we will ship it. I'm mm -hmm. glad people are excited about that book. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely I, they are. I, I was terrified. It was my like weird little personal superhero fetish that nobody else would have any interest in. <laughs> Sean Vieira says, condition cards? Where? When? Take my money. All right. <laughs> I mean, All right, friend. Ask as soon as possible, and we're not quite sure where. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. But we're working on that. Probably on drive through for now, yes. where you can print them on demand. Indeed. Uh, nice. We had wanted to have them. I imagine they fell through the cracks because of everything. I think uh, we were yes. surprised. I think, yeah, I think yeah, the original yeah. plan was to have them printed for cons and distribution. And, and then, of course, cons didn't happen. And then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And Jay Gray says, I'm excited. Unfortunately, I have to save my extra money for Sword Chronicle. Um, oh. You know, I think uh, if you're looking at order of operations, mm -hmm. um, maybe pick this up and then pick up the other one, too. I mean, why not? <laughs> Sword Chronicle is also us, Troy. That's right. true. Pick up one, <laughs> then the other. I'm yes. saying. Give them, give them both some love. As it so happens, Sword Chronicle will probably be out first, and then after that, you can get the condition cards. Yeah, no, the secret here is to use the money you've got to buy more money, and then get both books. Right. Alex uh, Thomas mentions that um, uh, Legends of Tomorrow and Umbrella Academy uh, has a lot of people itching for some time travel shenanigans. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I finally, well, finally started watching Umbrella Academy this weekend. It is quite a show. I haven't gotten it yet. I want to be able to focus um, uh, this weekend. I got actually up into a lot of different mutants and masterminds tasks, but I want to read what some folks are saying before I get into that. What size are the condition cards supposed to be? Oh, uh, standard playing card size. Nice. Let's see. Um, I will say for folks who have seen Umbrella Academy season two that Time Traveler's Codex offers all kinds of fun ways you can screw up the timeline. It does. Let me exactly. stop sharing here, by the way, since we're not. Oh, that's anything. right. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, now we can uh, all look at Steve's lovely face. AJ says, I missed the talk regarding Roll20. Is something going on with that? Well, across the boards, most certainly um, we are uh, really moving our focus to uh, f fleshing out the uh, assets and things that you can access on mm -hmm. World 20 and uh, and the other um, services that are out there. And so that's that's happening. And yes. uh, Crystal mentioned that these maps will be made available on World 20. And it's just sort of a, um, in the order of, of uh, you know, uh, triage, there's, uh, I think we're, what are we working on right now in there? I believe, is it uh, We're starting with character sheets as sort of yes. our primary thing. Yep. Um, and we do making have... sure that we have player resources available first. Yep, and we do have a basic set of tokens ready to go, pulled from the, the Heroes Handbook and the Basic Heroes Handbook and the Game Master's Guide. Yep. Or Absolutely. Game Master's Handbook. And there's uh, been a pretty big rollout of m and resources on Fantasy Grounds uh, for folks who are familiar with that um, uh, platform. Uh, so we're just you know working on getting things available as quickly as we can. Yeah, we are, DT... we are a very small company, and yeah, very few of us are technically savvy. <laughs> no, yeah, we we're here to break tech, um, pretty much. Um, it is it is the gay curse. You are either a programmer or you <laughs> mm -hmm. break or, or you, you break yeah. toasters. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, being in proximity alone will t uh, handle that. I know that Crystal kind of has this dampening field that it impacts technology. Um, it's a remarkable power. DT Sketch Buccino says Roll Twenty really needs a new M and M sheet. Uh, character sheet. Um, we agree. We, we've <laughs> talked about that. Yeah, that's it. Stephen Jones says thank you with about three thousand exclamation points. Um, uh, AJ Real says that will be awesome. Jay Gray is um, sharing links as he is wont to do. Um, so here's what I did this weekend. Um, first of all, I have I I don't want to show a preview yet, but next Monday we will be debuting our overlays. Um, yes. 
We've been working on those for a couple weeks now. And what that means is that we will be shifting to be like a, a real stream. And we'll be adding some additional venues to, that we're streaming to, which I'm kind of excited about. Uh, I don't know that we're going to do them all at the same time because I think each platform kind of has its own sort of vibe and mm-hmm. trying to squeeze, you know, a uh, one size fits all kind of experience into all those platforms might not be the best use of our time, mm-hmm. but we will be adding more. And, you know, I gave a little preview um, to uh, Chris, yeah, to Crystal and Steve. And um, what'd you guys think? I think it looks think, cool. Yeah, they look good. Pretty fancy, pretty colorful. We'll do that. And then we're going to be um, engaging in some new uh, uh, stream tech as well um but the other thing that i did is i did a deep dive and i really it's it's your fault crystal at 100 your fault probably I, it, it is i started i went down the cartography rabbit hole that mm. is definitely my fault it's your fault and it's 20 years of of green ronin creating the these worlds and uh, and i started at pinterest and uh, i'm telling you folks if you haven't had a chance to click around in the you know I, i've got a pinterest board that's like my personal one and it's got like plants pranks i want to play on crystal how to shave a cat you know like that kind of dumb stuff um but when i started why is there so much overlap between those three categories <laughs> troy <laughs> hmm. i will say nothing it doesn't involve a wig um i will <laughs> uh, i will say that wow we have done so much stuff and to unpack exactly the all of the things that the two of you have done over the course of your careers it is very challenging to find one a way to bundle that all together um pinterest (laughs) offers a really great um way to do that i'm gonna do a quick screen share um just because i want to show you what we have done what so has jay gray found the link to your pinterest yet uh yes actually (laughs) a while ago as a matter of fact uh, (laughs) all right can we see that yep all -hmm. right let's take a look at the boards um so of course we've got uh (laughs) assets and logos and things we'll put more of those up if you are somebody who is like i really wish i could you know i had this or that um let me know and i will put that up there uh as a place for you to go Alrighty, here is go to there we go. Click. <laughs> this is our team. Um, look at how handsome we all are. Everybody just looks <laughs> phenomenal. We are missing a couple people. They know who they are. They are late. Um, but it kind of breaks down um, everybody's uh, uh, bios and uh, ways to sort of you know, like so you can save this um, pin here and it will give you the link to everybody and it talks about the credits for the games, all the stuff that we've done which is pretty darn exciting. Um, but and people, is, love, people love Joe. They, right? yeah, well, there's, yeah. Well, there's people with taste. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, there are, yeah, there are a couple folks that they love, a couple, three of them. But so here's the Mutants and Masterminds breakdown. And I thought, you know, what I do is just sort of play around a bit. Of course, we have the superhero noise fight, which we're going to do again because that's so funny. Um, but we, it is amazing so i started i was like hey we'll do maps and i was like here's some maps mm-hmm. and there's two and then i started finding more and more and more so i had to create my own category <laughs> um but i made this for us look at this it's our little breakdown of our shows you can oh, come oh, here and click nice. and uh, watch and listen and here's the three of us we're going to do some new graphics for our uh, presentation but this is where it gets a little obsessive i looked at the clock and i'm like it's three in the morning what am i doing <laughs> but um i i've gotten to through two of our cartographers i know that there are many more um uh, mm-hmm. but like sean mcdonald it this is unbelievable it's just so amazing um and uh i've saved this is all of them uh, of the maps. So if you have got a little map fancy and want to come check that stuff out, uh, look yeah. for me on Pinterest. It's uh, I'm Ronan Troy. So Pinterest.com slash I'm Ronan Troy because I am Ronan Troy. Um, in addition, I hung out with some folks on Reddit. Are you familiar with that? A little Reddit? Mm-hmm. A little website? Where people, 
Is no. it is it new? Red <laughs> dit. Red the dit. dit. Yes. I don't huh. know what a dit huh. is, but mm -hmm. I'm certain it's foul. Um there is a question that we have a, a, a group of folks that run uh, mutants and masterminds uh, slash uh, r slash mutants and masterminds uh, subreddit there. And uh, this person comes from uh, their name is uh, Tatsu. I'm going to stick with Tatsu. It's uh, Tatsu Dragunov. Tatsu Dragunov. Uh, this sounds like a stew or something. Um, this is what they asked. I would like to know if it's possible to use Eminem to make uh, scenarios that are not superheroes but imitate other systems like D, D and vampire or to make very stylized scenarios like steampunk or magic uh, mm -hmm. uh like the world of the movie howl's moving castle can i do it using m m and supplements yeah it's certainly possible yeah i there i actually just wrote a blog last week uh, talking about how you recreate the dungeon crawling feel using mutants and masterminds because one of our adventures delves into a magical dungeon dimension where, you know, we present it as scenes, but your table might want to play it out as a little like D&D style dungeon crawl. Yeah, I mean, one I of the, the qualities of a superhero game like Mutants and Masterminds is you have to cover a lot of bases. Mm -hmm. So by definition, the system stretches to accommodate a lot. And so you can, yeah, I mean, you can cover a lot of different scenarios uh, with, with the Mutants and Masterminds rules. Um, it's just a matter of, of whether or not you want to and how much work you want to do in terms of customizing those rules to suit whatever specific kind of genre you're you're working with. I yeah, like it. At, at its ahead. very core, Eminem is the D20 system. So it's mm -hmm. right. really flexible. It was D&D &D originally. It's been used for modern games and sci-fi games. Uh, it just, it's just a question of, you know, determining how you present powers or if you do it all. Uh, like if you want to do a magic game, then you're going to use the the effect system to build spells, but otherwise people probably aren't going to have access to two powers. Right. Here's a, a, oh, did a we little. Lose, did we lose Steve? No. Uh, oh, yes. I was like, Steve is frozen. Um, we'll we'll get him back here in a moment. Um, this is uh, a further elaboration. Um, uh, so they say, I asked the question because I always like to innovate and I'm feeling the deep, uh, the, what they're playing right now doesn't allow the innovation uh, as freely. And so, uh, with, and so with Eminem, it's one of the systems I'm learning in this quarantine. I came up with the idea to use it to make other types of scenarios so that I could have continued, continued to kind of experiment and innovate. There he is. Sorry um, about that. I dropped no out yeah, I mean... Way back in the day, I used Eminem to make a conversion for my favorite post-apocalyptic game. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the the big adjustments you have to like take a look at are like uh, health and how quickly characters recover it, mm -hmm. because right now superheroes can be beaten half to death and then pop back up like spring daisies. <laughs> uh, so you might change that so that you only shed one damage condition an hour or one damage condition a day, depending on how mm -hmm. pretty you want it to feel. Um, you're also gonna wanna maybe tinker with the the progression table on page 10 of the, the hero's handbook uh, so that your your powers, your movement, things like mm -hmm. that scale. Uh, a little slower. Yeah, don't scale logarithmically, they scale, you know, arithmetically or, mm -hmm. you know. I love it. Um, so my friend um, Tatsu, we um, uh, they say uh, I'm very happy that my question reached you. I really didn't expect it. Um, that's what we the mutants and masterminds Monday is just it's a place where magic happens. Um, so what we're <laughs> going to do is I'm going to reach out to you, uh, let you know that we answered your question, and we're going to give you a little a little surprise, a little gift from us, um, thanking you for just you know uh, seeing mutants and masterminds as sort of this palette with which to create space to have a, a, a <laughs> fun with your friends and to do so during the quarantine i mean that's um that's mm. a good use of time a way to get your creativity cooking yeah. uh, that's healthy unlike you know all the brownies i've been eating oh uh, <laughs> right i think i eat cookies before every stream and i don't know why i do it i need to get rid of them i didn't know you rush 
Yeah, right? I don't even remember buying cookies. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Where did these cookies come from? Right? Where are my cookies? Yeah. As I'm eating them. <laughs> these mystery cookies. Um, I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us. Um, really, this has just been a lot of fun as we've continued to kind of grow and change. I know that we've got some exciting things coming from friends of ours in the community. I'm not going to say anything about them, but uh, I know what's going on for sure. And uh, looking forward to sharing that as well. Um, hey, my two friends, do you have anything you want to close with? <laughs> I do, but it's not Mutants and Masterminds related and it's kind of silly. Of course, I'm like, really, my, <laughs> honestly, not this program, madam. <laughs> my dog is sleeping just over here and oh. she's been so peaceful throughout this whole stream. Yeah. So I'm just going to steal this. Oh, oh okay. dragged a little dirty sock over here just to make it comfy. <laughs> and she, yeah, and and rather than sleep on her blanket, which I put there <laughs> right by the window, she's just here on the tile. Wow. <laughs> Very cute. I wish I could show you my dog, but he's sitting here staring at me like a creep. Get out of here. I'm not <laughs> talking to you. He always thinks I'm having a chat. Like, why are you looking? Look at why my are you eyes. talking? Yeah, exactly. Why are no treats coming out? Um, excellent. Well, that is a really crucial key update, yeah. Crystal. Thank that you is, for that. That is just critical to understanding the Mutants and Masterminds experience. It and really for making, is. yeah, and for making your Monday, you know, your Mutants yeah. and Masterminds Monday magical. Um, how about you, Steve? <laughs> I'll just go with reminding everybody that heroes wear masks to protect the people they care about so please if you're going to be out and about you know wear a mask that's right and you don't have to wear a cape but at least wear a mask. capes are optional yeah. capes are optional um, and if you do wear a cape make sure it's a tear away cape because right. you do not want to get pinned to a building and or bridge or sucked right. into a jet engine yeah, exactly. None of that is good, but you do want to be able to like theatrically leave a room and a flourish. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Right? Does yeah, and I do that without a cape, so it all works out in the end. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, two, for um, hanging out and uh, suffering our technical opportunities. And next week, we introduce a whole new layer of stuff, and so it'll probably go without a hitch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us. We will see you next Monday. And, uh, oh, uh, as an update, we are going to be um, – we are retooling our um, Fiction Friday. Uh, we are lining up our uh, author interviews and some other opportunities there. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we're putting that on hold for a little bit to make some space in my brain to get our Mutants and Mastermind <laughs> stream in order. Um, but, yeah, other than that, um, uh, enjoy the, the maps as they come out every day this week. And we will see you next Monday with a beautiful-looking yep. show. Now that I've said it and committed to it, it's not going to work. So, Of course. <laughs> so be surprised. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.